Hello everybody, my name is Zen, and we're going to be taking a look at Nebuchadnezzar, which is a return to some old city building type games that I used to play a lot of when I was like in junior high and early high school. So going back to these games like, um, like Zeus, Master of Olympus, or Pharaoh and Cleopatra, like these games came out in the early 2000s. Um, and then you also had like Emperor, which I think was 2002. Uh, but this all goes back to the early, early, early games of like Caesar and Caesar 2 and 3, which I mean, I think Caesar was, I want to say 92 is when that game came out. So there is a bit of a lineage to old style city building games like this. And when it got to like the Zeus and Cleopatra and even Poseidon stuff, uh, those games were excellent. And you can actually go get those games on Steam or GOG. And I suggest it because they were actually, they stand up the test of time. Um, we're going to jump in here and I'm going to show you, I've, I've basically done most of the tutorial levels in this. There's a lot to learn and we're going to, we're going to be skipping around. I'm not just going to like show you my city very slowly building over 45 minutes. Um, we're going to, you know, make, make jump cuts and everything because there is a little bit of downtime in this game. So we're going to go straight into uh, the final tutorial level and I'll be playing on on normal for this but it's going to give you an idea of what to expect from this game which by the way is now available on Steam it just came out today you can also get it on GOG if you prefer getting it somewhere other than Steam um, there are nice little history lessons uh, before each campaign level I quite like it. it it tells you like you know when pottery became uh basically a thing and when different kinds of uh, uh, sowing of seeds and getting different wheats and everything it's like really really cool it goes into the history of uh, the area around like Samaria and all that so I'm going to just go ahead and skip through all this I've done this tutorial already um, but essentially it it does a really good job as much as it could of teaching you the mechanics of the game and my only gripe with the game I, I think it's excellent but my only gripe with the game is that it's a little it's a little too micromanagey so we need to build essentially a city I have objectives up here for this campaign so I have to get a population of 3100 that's quite easy to do I'm gonna have to gain money we're gonna gain money by doing trade with other people uh our prestige which is like how cool our city is we need to get that to 120 and we have to get uh, a number of houses at the given level so we need a standard villas so basically your your housing uh if i can figure out which one it was i think it was the production chain your housing levels up as you gain different stuff so like your stuff your basic housing starts as a shack then it becomes a poor house once you get wheat and milk going to it right so like it gives you a pretty good idea of the production chain here then it becomes standard once you get pottery and water and the same thing happens with villas so a villa is like a better off house right you get fancier people who move into villas and you can upgrade your villas to a standard villa by getting um dates and fish in order to upgrade them so that, that's how that works so we're gonna build a tiny little city here um and essentially what we're going to do is start with the production needs of our city. So if you think of like an ancient city, what do you need? You need food. So we're going to start with food. So we need crops and we need livestock. So our crop is going to make wheat and dates if we choose to have it make dates to begin with. And then our livestock is going to produce goat's milk because we got goats. So I'm going to set up a little system and show you how that works. So essentially... Um, in order to put a a uh, crop farm down, you see the blue area is the area in which things can be sent to or from the crop. Uh, the green area is how big your crop can be. So I'm going to just build a crop over by the water. The reason why is because we want our crops to be irrigated. Irrigation was something that uh, didn't come in until, and this is something cool that the, the game teaches you, but it didn't come in until a bit later. So when you first start the game, it uh, through the tutorials, it's like, yo, yeah, you can do crops and everything, but you don't have any irrigation yet. So it slowly builds into it. I think that that is a really cool part 
of the game. So we're gonna make a path, right? Cause we need the thing to be connected to a road. And then we need a little bit of irrigation. So I'm going to set up a channel just to go this way. And then down past here, because I want some irrigation on either side. And of course we need a pump for the water. And there you go. So that's, that's how basically how you set up a farm. You place it so you have fields, then you have some workers. Um, I only need two sets of workers at the moment because we're going to start with a tiny city as opposed to once you start getting like huge amounts of population, like 3,100, you're going to be wanting to work as many of your fields as possible in order to keep up with the food. Then we also need some milk. So we're going to make a livestock farm. Now we are able to place our farm down over here and still irrigate it, right? So that will allow us to put it in positions where our irrigation is essentially being utilized twice. So we're only having to put one thing of irrigation down. We can also put it off over here and then run irrigation down the middle if we so choose. Though I don't believe that it's gonna be necessary to do that. So we could place our, our little farm down here and then uh, we're gonna need a dirt road in order for us to access it. So I'll put a dirt road down. And then of course we can continue our irrigation this way. And uh, just like before, we're gonna put some fields. Now we're gonna have so many goats. The goats are gonna be off the chain. <laughs> we, we're gonna need more water going to this though. So I'm gonna need some more pumps. Um, so I'm gonna also set that up over here. So I've redone the roads a little bit and I set up uh, better canals here, but what we're going to do is now throw down a warehouse because we need, we need our stuff that we're generating here to go to a, a place. So we need, you know, we need to store this stuff. Um, there's a bunch of stuff here. I'm not going to go into all of it. Don't worry. This isn't the tutorial. If you're interested in the game, just go get it. Play through the tutorial. It'll teach you all of this stuff. But essentially what I want is I want to store wheat and milk here. Right. So that is, I'm basically disabling everything else like bread and clay and pottery. And then these are just going to go straight to here. And because we have this stuff being, uh, essentially shipped straight to this warehouse, I don't necessarily need to ship it anywhere else. Like I don't need to have all of my houses down over here, but there is a pollution factor. So as long as you're producing things, you're creating pollution, whether that be noise pollution or just smell or whatever it happens to be in, in the ancient times here, it doesn't really matter because as long as I have my houses outside of this little pollution field, then they're going to be kind of happy. And we're just going to do basic houses. So we're not, you know, we're not necessarily making a, uh, <laughs> a hyper advanced luxurious area to live for these types of people at the moment. So we just want to get some basic things. So we want to be able to produce food. So we're we're getting wheat that we need to turn into bread. So we're gonna put a bakery down. In fact, I'm gonna put two bakeries down just to have um, enough uh, area here to, or enough bread to, to keep up with the amount of people that we're gonna bring in all at once. And then I need a market to go ahead and distribute this stuff as well. So I'll, I'll place my market um, off over here. So essentially, my wheat is going to come into the storage. My milk is going to come into the storage. The wheat is going to go be made into bread with my bakers. And then this market I will set up to distribute. But we're going to place some houses down. So houses obviously need uh, roads nearby in order to be accessible. So we're just going to go ahead and place that. Um, I could probably fix the road over there so it's not so wonky. In fact, that's exactly what we're going to do. Um, there we go. Uh, where I thought I got it. Let's try that again because I hit the button in the corner. Oh my goodness. All right, let's fix this. All right, that looks like it will work for the time being. So what we're gonna do is set up some people. Now I haven't even gotten people moving in yet, but I think that's totally fine. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna set up this person to distribute bread. So we're gonna create a path around in order to distribute it. And then we're gonna also create one for milk. Um, and then of course make a path go around our houses in order to distribute said milk. Now we can unpause and people are going to start moving in and those people are now going to go get jobs, which is perfect. We need, we need people working right for settlers have come really good. 
So we have just enough people here. We're gonna have two workers working the fields, but obviously each worker can only work 18 fields and we have far more than 18. So as we gain population and we gain more workers, we will add more workers to this um, so that they can be working the entire field rather than just a part of it. And at any given point, if you feel like the game is going too slowly or you're waiting for things to happen, you could speed it up over here or you can just hold the E button, which I find kind of convenient, and it will go ahead and just speed everything up so that your place is in working order. And as we see, it is. So they have a really nice little um, breakdown of everything. So I'm producing milk and I am consuming quite a bit of it. Uh, right now I'm not producing wheat or bread because that is a seasonal thing. The wheat is currently growing as we progress through the... Uh, the months which you can see up at the top this stuff will grow and then it'll harvest come down into here be made into bread as you see it happening right now and then the bread is going to be distributed to our people pretty basic little setup right it's a city builder it requires some management but my biggest gripe with this game so far is that the further you get into the game it seems to be that there is uh, just a little too much micromanagement and it's it's fun if you're into city builders you know, if you like things like um, like City Skylines or SimCity, that kind of stuff, you're used to quite a bit of the automation that can happen. But with this, it does require you to micromanage. Like just even getting food and stuff distributed is micromanagement. But if you're into that kind of micromanagement, then this game is definitely for you. And if you're a part of the generation like myself, who grew up on city builder, city builder games, rather like Zeus and Cleopatra and even Caesar Emperor and playing those games uh, into the wee hours of the night until you had to get up to go to school the next morning, right? Like that was, <laughs> that was my experience. Um, then this is very familiar to you in many ways. And it's a lot of fun. But if you're not into that kind of stuff and you want to just kind of build a city, then maybe something like City Skylines might be a little bit better. But there is one aspect of this game that I like more than, you know, things like City Skylines, which is the history aspect. I like that the game teaches you about history as you play it. And I think that that is definitely a positive aspect that needs to be shared because it does an excellent job of breaking it all down and giving you dates for everything and like here's how irrigation came into play and before then they were growing wild versions of wheat before they created their own crops and everything and it's like it's really cool how it breaks all that down now let's take a look at our houses over here so you can see that i have some some poor houses that have gone from like the uh what is it called just the house to the poor house which seems like a downgrade but it's not um, and the reason that they're upgrading and you can see them visually upgrading is because I have wheat and, or I have bread and milk, but in order to get them up another tier, I need water and I need pottery. So that's the next thing that we need to do. So we need to come over here and create a well. Yeah. People are coming back. Yay. <laughs> that happens pretty often in flip flops. So we're going to create a well. And then just like before, we're going to create a path for our person to then distribute water, right? And I don't feel like I need um, a second person here because my little area is quite small, but then that will, you know, start distributing that. Now, the next thing we need is clay. And this is when I'm going to set up something different. And now, again, I should probably mention, I'm not going to do this hyper efficiently ju just because it's not necessary right now. But what I will do is just set up a little clay area for us to um, be gaining that. So. I want some clay mines probably off over here. And by the way, there's little spots that you can't build on, which you can see from the red. It's mildly annoying to have to deal with, but this game definitely uh, utilizes the idea of space uh, pretty well. So it, it means that you're going to be focused on the, the amount of space that you have when you're doing city building. And that seems annoying to some people for sure i like if i were an outside observer i'd be like oh that's kind of annoying but it is part of the process so just kind of keep that in mind like space management is part of the fun of these games okay so what we're going to do is have clay coming in right so we don't want any other thing being stored here we just want clay and then we also want to start making um pottery 
And so thing that we're going to do here is set up a, where is it? We're going to set up a ceramic workshop and we're just going to push this, um, as basically within this area. So the blue area is touching our, uh, stockpile there, but is also next to this market. And what that's going to allow me to do is not have to ship things around. So this is going to be automatically transported over to here, turned into, uh, pottery and then distributed out over here to the, you know, the, the market, which will then, you know, distribute the pottery. So what we're going to do is create a pottery person and we will set up their little route, just like we did the other ones. And then there you go. So now it's, now it's affecting all of those houses. Um, the other thing I can do is just go ahead and turn on pottery storage. I don't need to, I don't think it's going to be necessary, but if I, in case I have an excess amount of pottery, uh, it'll start being stored there. And then throughout my city building experience, I'm going to have to go through and, and micromanage these a little bit and make sure that they're not um, getting too backed up with supply. Now, the result of that work that we just did is that this house is now a standard house, right? So we have ceramics coming in and we have water coming in, which is quite nice. Unfortunately, pollution is quite high in this area due to the, um, the pottery, the baking, just everything. So if we wanted to create a nicer area with villas, we're going to do it off on a side where that's not really going to be that big of a deal. But the second thing that I'm going to really dive into here <clears throat> outside of building my city is building a temple. Temples are prestigious. They make it so your prestige definitely goes up if you're able to build one. So we're just going to set one up off over here, essentially in the area that we can't build because all of this area we can build on with the temple. Whereas if we were doing, you know, normal buildings, this area would be useless. So again, it's all about space management. So I think I kind of want it facing this way, but I would use up more of these dead spaces if I put it a different direction. Uh, let's, let's put it facing that way. And then we need an area that our supplies are going to be collected. So I'm basically going to just pop her down over here because what we're going to do now is set up an area that is making bricks. So the brickworks, you can see I can set it up where the ceramic or rather the clay is getting put into the brickworks and then the brickwork is able to um, touch both of the things. In fact, I could probably set this up slightly more efficiently if I really wanted to, or I can move it over one and then I could have two there, but I'm just gonna put one across the way. So now my bricks are gonna automatically be brought over and start building the temple. The temple builds automatically. You can do a custom uh, temple the way that you want it to look. I'm just gonna do the template for now. It's just slightly easier. Now you'll see these guys are bringing the bricks back and forth, right? I can even speed it up a little bit. And I am very slowly gaining the amount for the current part that we need to build. So the, the, it builds automatically if you're doing the, temp, uh, the template. If you are building a custom one, it'll do it part by part, which is really cool. And you can see the total amount that I need in order to uh, build the entire monument. But for the, this point, we're just going to get the one piece and I'll show you how it just kind of pops up. It's really nice. It's, um, I would call it very effective at making you feel like you're building something cool piece by piece. And there you go. It just pops up. Gotta love it. So that will very slowly build over time and our prestige will go up. So now that we have this being built and we have this little area, it's like, well, should we set up a, uh, actually, you know what? I can even increase the amount of people we've got bringing this stuff in because I think our production of this stuff is going to slightly be skewed. Let's double check. Yeah, I am consuming quite a bit of bread, quite a bit of milk, and I need to be producing more. So we're just going to go ahead and up the ante over here on both of them. So that way we have as much surplus as possible. This last guy is only... Um, working 12 out of 18 because there's just no available spots. Totally fine. That's just how it happens sometimes. Now, what I'm going to do is make an area for my fancy people. <laughs> the fancy people in their villas. We're going to take a look at pollution. You see how it uh, kind of teeters off here. Well, actually, that works out kind of well for us because if we put a villa here and it takes up um, how many spaces? Boo, boo, boo. It takes up three spaces. We're right on the edge of that pollution which is quite nice. So what we're going to do is we're going to essentially place down a handful of these. I'm not going to put down a bunch, just a handful. 
just like this. And then when we go out of the pollution thing, you'll see we have three here and we'll do the same thing on the opposite side. Now, the reason why I'm not double stacking them like this and doing that, well, one, it would go into the, the pollution area, which would not make the fancy people happy. But two, we need to make these areas look really cool. And essentially you add into the appeal area. So if I place this down, actually let's turn off the appeal uh, filter so that way I can go ahead and place down some small gardens and some, some a bit of grass here. You know, this stuff is, is expensive too. So you're gonna have to be mindful of your money um, which comes to the management aspect once again, because you're going to want to be able to do some trading. And if you don't have that set up beforehand, you kind of screwed yourself. You're going to have to redo it. So you see that the appeal is in this whole area here. And if you look back at our pollution, we're just now starting this. So this appeal is going to go over into these villas, which is going to make them um, much more likely to be upgraded because unlike these, right? Th these houses over here, they don't have any appeal um, requirement in order to be upgraded, but these villas do. So we're going to need to make it even fancier. Let's place down a couple more of these, just kind of making it cool. Uh, putting a border down, boop, boop. Um, now the appeal is much higher and is not being quite hit over here. So we could put some more stuff down as we go. But what we need to do now that we have these villas set up and that we're gonna have people moving in is we actually need um, dates and fish. So we're gonna set that up off over here. Okay, so I've got a setup where I'm generating far more dates than I probably need to. <laughs> uh, the dates and the fish, which are the, I have the fisheries up here, are being stored in this warehouse. The warehouse is taking it over to this standard market, right? Because you have different kinds of markets. So you have the standard market and the poor market. Our standard market can distribute fish and dates. So it is distributing out over to these. And we, of course, have our little thing set up where they're just going down one little area. They don't need to have really any more than that. But we could put, because we're going to be generating quite a lot of dates and fish, we could put some more villas down. So let's just go ahead and build those out like so. And it worked out just right that we're going to have just enough space to put some decoration all around these. So I'm actually just going to do every two as grass like so because I think that that looks pretty cool. And you know what? If you're not building a city that you enjoy the look of, what's what's the point of playing a city builder? You know what I mean? So let's also throw down some small gardens. We'll do that one there, that one there, there's there. And my money is very rapidly dwindling the moment that you start like getting this kind of, um, this kind of fanciness going. But as you can see, our villas are quickly upgrading to the second tier because we are more than meeting the the appeal. And then we also have quite a bit of dates, quite a bit of fish coming in. So that means we're going to get all of these fancy people in and we're very slowly going up in prestige and in the standard houses now. Now, the standard villas, I'm going to have to build quite a bit more of. I have nine right and i need 32 so if i'm if i'm to finish this mission that's going to need to go up also you see our our temple is still very slowly building which is quite cool i like it also made fancy uh fancy roads over here because you know it just makes makes more sense now i just built a port so this is basically how you get more money. And this is where, in my opinion, the game gets a little too micromanagey. But if you're into this kind of thing, then you will definitely love it. So our port essentially is here. In order to get things to the port, we're gonna need a caravan nursery, right? <laughs> so we're gonna put this down. Um, probably just off over, I don't know, here works just fine. So what we're going to do is uh, we're going to look at our list of things. So for our city, we have this prestige uh, layout. It tells you what your population is, how much trade you're doing, how many monuments you have, what prestige you're getting from monuments and, and whatnot, right? There's a lot of information here. We're not really going to go deep into that. All you need to know is that the more prestige you have, the more influence you're going to have over cities around you. 
So this, for instance, requires 100 prestige before they'll even interact with me. But you have other cities around here like this one that requires a gift of 30 bricks in order to initiate contact, where you also have this one, which requires a gift of 50 uh, pottery, 50 ceramics. So what we're going to do is we're going to set up a caravan to move ceramics from our... Uh, actually, you know what? I think I'm going to set up a new warehouse down here with just ceramics. I think that's a better way to do it. So I'll, I'll manage this guy in a second. This is purely going to be ceramics. So that means that um, oh, we're missing workers. We need more people. We, we need more um, of these houses in our city. We'll work on that in a second. So I want to come over here and completely turn off ceramics. Do I have that set up right? Yeah. Okay, so I need to set up this guy to go from over here, um, which is where our ceramics are, up to here. And then that's going to allow this, which it has its range, to now be within that. So then we could actually get some stuff going from one to the other. But the other way to set this up, and the other way that you have to do it, is this is for caravan configuration. So if it's red, it's loading goods. If it's green, it's unloading goods. And if it's neither, it's not transporting any goods. So we're going to have this warehouse loading goods and this warehouse receiving goods, right? See how that works? So it's just kind of a cool way of getting that set up. Now, when it comes to the bricks, are we generating even enough bricks? We're barely generating bricks very slowly uh, in order to get that. We need to set up some more houses over here in order to get more people, right? You can see our population our unemployment level is 2%, which sounds good, um, but we're missing quite a bit of workers because we just don't have the people. So we need more people in our city. We have, like these villas, they're beautiful. They're they're great. I set this up beautifully, but uh, this place over here, we need, to, we need to work on it a little bit. Now, because I've put new houses here, I need to make sure that my people that are doing these routes are also making their ways off over here because otherwise, these houses aren't getting any of the distribution that they need in order to grow, right? So at this point, I think it's probably a good idea to go ahead and grab a second one of these people to move her um, around this way. And then there you go. She's getting all of that distributed. In fact, I can even pop one down there just to double check that that is going into the correct areas. And you, as you see, we have an excess of, of uh, wheat and of milk. So we can definitely afford to have extra houses coming out here. The other thing that we can do is go ahead and make another ceramic workshop because otherwise we're not making enough ceramics. We have enough uh, bricks being made technically. Um, but if we wanted to up this anymore, the next thing to do would just be go ahead and add another clay mine. I can add other workers to these and we're gonna go ahead and do that as well. So that way we're, we're creating a bunch of clay. We're creating a bunch of ceramics I did that twice in a row. We, we're adding a bunch of ceramics, which we can then use as a gift to unlock our trading with this city, right? Because we need 50 to be able to send out. Now, what you can see here is we're very slowly generating um, pottery over here in order to send out as a gift. We're not generating any bricks because our bricks are going completely into our temple. But once the temple is done, then we'll start generating bricks. So you can kind of see how this ramps up over time. like. Once you get a temple done and you get a bunch of prestige from that, you can choose to be like, okay, cool. Don't need any more bricks for the temple. Let's start sending bricks as gifts. Let's start selling bricks so we can start making money, you know, exporting those out, importing new goods that we might need, and so on and so forth. So you kind of get an idea of how this game works. We're not going to finish this mission because, well, it's basically a lot of what we've already done here and it's a lot of just setting up new city structure but hopefully this gives you a good idea of what the game is like i think nebuchadnezzar is super cool it's really fun for me to go and relive some of that uh that childhood of playing city builders like cleopatra and pharaoh and zeus poseidon emperor even caesar like i played all of those games and they were all a lot of fun but uh, this is definitely a return to that genre, which we haven't really seen in some time. So I think that for the most part, it is definitely welcome. Um, I think there is a market for it. There's people who like those games. But at the same time, you could just go purchase those games too if that is something that you like really want to be playing. So 
yeah, there is a market for it. You can always return to those older games. And if those feel too old for you and you want something fresh, then this is definitely an option. And it's really cheap. So it is available on Steam and GOG as of this moment. I'm sure it'll come to more storefronts in the future. But if you want to pick it up, I'll put a link in the description to both of those storefronts. Non-affiliate links, just because I don't, I don't need it. This is a... A really cool experience for people and I think that everybody should try it out if you're even mildly interested in it and with that being said we shall see you guys next time